Hello everyone, I'm Karius and welcome to kind of a weird mod video slash me just testing out video formats. Right here I've got a strife I put together a little while ago. It's kind of an experiment in um, learning how to wire in LEDs and trying a couple different cage types and trying some different paints and the paint job turned out all right um, but it's just been kind of a workhorse strife that uh, a couple small children have burnt out and killed and it's been resurrected several times and a friend of mine pointed out that I mean it's 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 a pretty nice blaster and instead of just treating it like a experiment I could go the extra step and make it look really nice um, with some big Zen Z casted parts. And I love that idea, so it's like, all right, cool. So this video is hashtag not sponsored by Biggs, but he does really cool stuff, so free advertisement there. Just, let's see, let's turn the light out for a second so you can see. It's got some nice blue LEDs in there. It's got a kind of a glow to it. Switch on the back. And hopefully these casted parts are going to enhance that quite a bit. So let's open this thing up and swap these parts out. And I can show you what the uh, what the heart of this blaster looks like because it's a pretty nice setup. Got the wrong screwdriver. I'll be right back. Oh. Drag stole my screwdriver, so I need to keep forgetting which one I'm using nowadays. <laughs> no, that screwdriver would be too big too, but still. You owe me a screwdriver drag. I don't forget. Uh, let's see. Oh, nope, don't need that one. Yeah, so this is this is a, pretty much one of the nicest um, flywheel blasters I have internally, as far as its performance. It's a 41.5 millimeter Morpheus cage. And it shoots lasers at 150 to 160 FPS. And um, every time I bust it out, I'm surprised at its performance. And I figure it's time to upgrade it to make it really look nice. To make its looks on the outside mesh what it does on the inside. So here we are. It's, um,. Some sort of, this might be hooligan wheels, and then I've got my Morpheus cage, and I think it's Neo Rhino motors. Yeah, I can, I can see the red in there. Um, fairly basic otherwise. And then I got my switch back here wired up to all the LEDs. I got one here, here. Uh, I think there's one nestled in this thing, which I'm going to have to gonna have to think about how to do that one because I'm replacing this whole piece so yeah but okay let's see what these parts look like so Big Zen Z does some really nice casted nerf parts um, right out of the box they're already ready to drop in um, some of them you can see kind of little mold lines but there's nothing, there's like no bubbles, there's no real nasty burrs or anything. We'll see if this just drops in like it should. I also like that he casts extended rev triggers and mag releases too, so that you can, you don't have to, you don't have to go with a stock set up if you want something pretty. Okay, now this, oh yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, there's a little, 
It looked like it was a little um, snug, but it seems to be actually in the magrelish is fine. That's nice. Of course, we got the Traeger. And this, this is just, it's such a nice part. I mean, look at it. Got this nice translucent blue that I figure will go well with the theme of this blaster. Just kind of this, um, I ended up painting the whole thing white and then just kind of misting blue and um, blue and silver over it to make this kind of frosted effect that looks, that actually turned out a lot nicer than I was expecting. And I like it. Get this pretty blue trigger in there. I mean, I'm doing this the wrong way, obviously. I should just take this off so that I don't have to flex this whole thing in there. There we go. You can see it's already got a worker, ex slightly extended pusher in here, which I find really helps with the feeding on a lot of stripes that I've done. Ditto has two of them in there now, and it's it's helped with the reliability quite a bit. What was this from? Oh, the trigger. Yeah, duh. I find that bigger screwdrivers work better on these internal screws. It's weird how the um, how Hasbro planned on a trigger spring and then decided that their pusher spring was good enough and they just left this bit here. I always found that kind of interesting. So I had a pretty good Labor Day weekend. Birthday was yesterday and got to see my family and they got me a, um, a drill press for my birthday which is great. So now I have that. It's one of the tools that my father had that I used all the time that now that I don't have I was really missing. That's weird. Ooh, okay. Oh, yeah, I screwed up the spring. No wonder. Now did I did I train this down? Oh I did, okay. I might have to modify this a little bit. Oh yeah, and it's pretty okay, this part has a little bit of extra on it. I need to file off. Let me get my file. Oh, just a little bit. Let's see, where was the where was it rubbing? So it's rubbing a bit. It's mostly in the bottom here. And of course, since I um, this is probably it's probably too long because I ended up having to cut this down a little bit. Yeah, so I'll file that too. We'll see how these these parts react to being filed down a bit. Hopefully, that doesn't screw things up any. This nice Bobololo style rev trigger. Yeah. Yeah, this part looked like it got cast a little bit strange. Just the very bottom of this ridge it was kind of like had a blob of extra material on it. That should do it though. As long as the well, I square up the sides of it too. One of the most important tools you can have if you're doing a lot of intricate work. Oh, that's way nicer. Cool. All right, it is a big file. One of the things I've learned from Mr. Nathan. Why do I even need to trim this thing? Looks like it's fine, fine the way it is. Also, why did I use a tiny switch like that? That's weird. Maybe another experiment. Huh. Okay. Looks like it's working though, so. Might as well stick with it and see what happens. Yeah, okay, that looks like it's working fine. One mistake people tend to make on stripes, um, especially if you're keeping the stock wrap trigger, is not keeping at least a piece of this plate here, because that keeps the trigger lined up correctly, and if you don't have it in it, it'll try to bend sideways and get stuck on you sometimes, especially depending on how you have this switch situation. 
which is annoying, to say the least. That's already looking really cool. Oh yeah, all right. Another thing, this uh, strife was missing these pieces because it was a modulus strife, and those pieces are green on a modulus strife, and they looked really dumb, so I just left them out. But now I've got proper blue ones that'll look really awesome. There we go. One up here. Yeah, the fact that some cast parts of these, like, parts that are this this small just pop in there without any kind of adjustment really shows you the quality of these castings. Okay, we've got replace the jam door. It's good to be doing nerf again. I figure if I'm gonna be doing stuff like this might as well record it. How does this fit? Looks like it's fine. Okay, cool. Nothing, no modification needed there. It looks like it might be warped a little bit, but the shell will fix that just by being closed around it. This is this cute tiny little bag, and he's got the the uh, uh, rail retention tab thingy in. It's so small I can't even get my thumbs in there to open it. There we go the tiniest cast part. Even this is like, it's perfect. One of the most annoying decisions Hasbro's ever made is making this a separate little spring-loaded piece. Because they always pop out of blasters at the slightest provocation. Okay, what else? I mean, oh, that's another idea. I never put a voltmeter in this thing, and maybe I should. That would be a separate project that I probably shouldn't spend time recording right now. Yeah, I'm going to do that after this recording, and then come back. I might do a record. I don't know. I might record it. I don't know. Um, it's got this really nice battery door to replace this Chase 3D door, which I was kind of overstressing with a battery that was a little too big for it, and I broke off the tabs on the back here, which is surprising because Chase 3D does this nice thing with his printed battery doors where he, he 3D prints separate little L-shaped tabs and glues them in place so that his stuff is a lot stronger than a lot of 3D printed battery doors I've seen that just kind of print it as one piece and hope they don't break. But even that wasn't enough with the amount of stress I was putting on this low profile door. And it looks like, yeah, this uh, this is a more standard Strife battery door that should be more than enough space. So that'll be cool. And the last piece is this big one. And my only issue here is that I've I set an LED into this orange piece. I might have set, I might have done two. No, maybe it I think it's just the one. Okay. I gotta take the cage out anyway because the Morpheus guide goes into that barrel. Hopefully I don't have to do too much to, to adjust this LED. Damn it. Is this? No. My screwdriver is slightly magnetic but not more so than Neo Rhino so that screw is just gonna be stuck there until I take the cage out. <laughs> Screw slightly stripped. Okay, that's annoying. Okay. This whole thing. Just come out here. Get that screw. Get, get off the motor. There we go. Alright, so what did I. Oh wow, I just nested that whole thing in there. Alright, that's gonna be annoying. Is it just one screw for this part? I don't remember. Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, wow. I put it up in the barrel? I forgot I did that. I mean, that's really cool, but I can't exactly do that here without drilling all the way into this thing, which I could. I have to do it separate, differently, though. There we go. We can 
two out of there. It's no longer needed. Okay, so this is, oh my god, that looks so cool. Um, hmm. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and take this rail out here because it'll let me get the cage out of the way temporarily. So I can fiddle with this LED. There we go. Yeah, Neo Rhinos. Second set of Neo Rhinos that have been in this blaster because if you let small children borrow high crush setups, just be prepared for them to completely burn your blaster out. First time they jam it, they'll just hold the rev trigger like an idiot because they don't know what they're doing, and your blaster's done at that point. <clears throat> Where did that screw go from here? Is it? It has vanished. I'll find it. Okay. Anyway, so we got this, the coolest of the pieces, and I want it to be well. Hmm. I could probably just drill an LED sized hole right here. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay. What size are these? If I had to guess, I'd say quarter inch is a little big. Oh no, that would be perfect. Okay. Quarter inch hole. So be very careful. The drill press would be perfect for this, but I haven't set it up yet. I literally just got it in still in the box, so I'm going to use a hand drill. And hopefully not destroy this beautiful part. Uh, th yeah, this is stupid. I'm going to drill a pilot hole first. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's start with an 8 inch. Yeah. If you're drilling a hole like this, it's usually a good idea to start with a smaller one first. Well, that answers that question. These um, cast parts, tend, they look like they machine fairly well, which is nice. I was worried they might like be um, be prone to shattering. They definitely are kind of powdery. It's neat that I can see how deep the drill has gone. I think that's actually exactly what I want already. Yeah, it doesn't need to go any farther because it's just going to hit that hole anyway for the screw post. So now let's open that up for the LED. Hopefully not break anything. Now that is really biting into there. <laughs> Fairly soft material. There we go. I got this little hole there. And I should be able to just light up this whole part with the LED inside of it. Yeah. Okay. Now the only thing I gotta do is these wires around so that they're not in a weird spot like that. Oh no, that'll work. Yeah. You just make the cage force them down. Now while I'm here, do I want to put a voltmeter in? I think I do. Oh, there's that screw. The motor got stuck to it. Somebody watching this video was like, it's right there, damn it. I can see it. Why can't you see it? Okay. Hmm. Do I know where my blue voltmeters are? Uh, let's go see if I can find one. So in my infinite wisdom, I have a pile of voltmeters, and I don't know what color any of them are, because I haven't... I didn't keep track. So let's just... Let's just figure it out, I guess. This looks like it's a 3S. These are kind of cool. 
kind of like the idea of using one of these. I don't know where I would put it though. It's kind of huge. It's actually pretty high quality wire. That's nice. Unlike these LEDs, which are just really basic. Might as well be Nerf wire. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but if you're careful, it's not a big deal. Okay, so it's red and blue. Hmm. That's cool, but I don't think it really matches the theme I'm going with for this blaster. So, let's eliminate those from the pile. I'm assuming those are all the same. Yeah. Wow, I bought four of those. Okay. I'll have to put those in a, in a cool blaster at some point. Oh, I could use uh, you could use uh, two of these on the Prometheuses. That'd be awesome. I got this little one. Now with three wire voltmeters, you end up with a um, the red and black are to actually power the voltmeter, and the white you tie into the voltage you're measuring. And for most applications, you're just going to tie the white and red together and then put the black into the negative like a normal voltmeter. But it's useful if for some reason you want the voltmeter be, to be powered off of something other than what you are actually measuring. Oh, that's blue. Oh, that was lucky. All right. Sold. I don't have to go looking through all the rest of these now. Cool. That was very lucky. <coughs> So I've also also got one of these. Is this the right size for this voltmeter? It is. Okay. I could do that. That's the lazy way of putting a voltmeter in. Which, I mean, makes it way easier. Huh. And you can kind of, you'd be able to kind of see it through this clear jam door. So that might actually just be cool. And with all this, this crap all over it, it's... It's not a. It's probably not a better place to put it, so I'm just gonna do it the easy way. Um, so then the other question is, how do I want to activate it, and where am I tying it in to the circuit? I could just have it on the same switch as the LEDs, so that way I don't have it on all the time. It's been a while since I wired this thing up, so I'm gonna reorient myself to where all the LEDs and everything is. But I believe so that's all tied into the right negative. So the negative can be spliced in here, which will work just fine. And the positive, I'm not sure I understand how I wired that. Okay, oh, okay, this is negative. This And these two are the connection terminals. And this little crappy black wire is powering all of the LEDs. So what I really need to do is solder the positive of the voltmeter to this bottom terminal. Now does this, is this separate? Okay, yeah, I don't, I can kind of get to it that way. I'm surprised all of these LEDs, yeah, they're all wired up to this crappy little wire. Okay, yeah, that's not going to be too difficult. The only thing is whether this will reach all the way over there. Which it looks like it definitely won't. So I just have to extend it. Soldering iron over here. Okay. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Every project makes a mess. It's just how it goes. Okay, turn you on. Put some water on this. And I need two little nerf screws to put this thing in place. Uh, you've been doing this as long as I have. You accumulate tons of little tiny screws from dead Nerf blasters. That helps quite a bit when you're doing this kind of thing. Now hopefully this will be the right size. Alright, cool. Voltmeter. Attached to this nice 3D printed bit that just fits in there and lets you easily attach your voltmeter. And it's got kind of a nice little channel so you can feed your wires through this little post down here and then into the channel like that. And there you go. And then it's a matter of making sure all these wires can interface 
fit in there with your main wires. Negative. And then these need to be extended. It's hard to overstate how nice it is to have wire strippers that work like this instead of the ones that are like Nutcracker style. When it comes to splicing new connections into existing wires, because you can just get in there like this instead of having to maneuver your wire cutters into a space like that. So the easy way to splice something in there is just take your wire, wire strippers and put two little notches right next to each other and take a nice sharp exacto blade and cut a slot between them. Be careful not to cut into the wire too much. And then just rip it out. There we go. Good enough. And then you just have them a nice little spot of exposed wire, which you can then tie your other wire into. And for little stuff like this, I find it easy to just kind of open up a little hole in the wire and feed your much smaller wire through it so that you're just feeding your wire directly into your um, other one makes a really solid connection after you solder it because they're basically mechanically connected as well as being glued by the solder. This wire is now going in between the strands of the other wire. And then, with my crappy solder technique, I can just do it directly on here. Hold it until I see the solder flowing into the wire, which it has done, and then there you go. Off the tip of the soldering iron. I'm gonna need a new tip eventually because of how shitty I am at soldering, but who cares? Okay, and then for something like this, it's really hard to get some heat shrink on there, so just get yourself some good electric tape and wrap it around there. There you go. So now I have the negative of my voltmeter spliced in there correctly. And I'm wanting the positive to go to this terminal on the switch so that it is activated when I turn the switch on. And it won't reach that far, so I need to strip these both, because these are both going to go to the same wire. Okay. These are going to get twisted together and then added to a new length of wire which I'll just eyeball at about this long. Let's see. Wrap them around this one. And then kind of curl the main wire back on itself so that you end up with them both hooked around each other. Well, that didn't work. Of course, if I pull on it like an idiot, then it's going to come apart. But after you solder it, they're stuck like that, and it's going to take quite a lot more force to yank them apart, as opposed to if you were to just butt them into each other and solder them that way. So now you're going to have this knot of wire. For the most part, the you can be a you can be terrible at soldering and still make really good connections, just by keeping in mind that you want the solder to flow onto whatever you are soldering. If you see that happen, then it's a good connection. It's my crappy heat gun. Get me some. Put some heat shrink over it. There we go, and that is a nicely connected wire. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is in there, I think. Seems kind of wobbly. Oh, I've got a wire on top of the screw post. Okay. Ta da! There's my voltmeter. It's fairly easy to put together there. Now I need this wire to go. Well, it looks like I got it the right length at least. Well, it's a little off. I need it to go to this terminal. I'm going to give it a little bit of slack. So I want that connected, but I no longer have the nice little hole. I could just re-drill myself a hole. Let's do that. 
solder is pretty easy to drill through. Oh, where's my eighth inch bit? Oh, I already put it back. Okay. Well, let's go smaller. It's been drilled. It would be nice if I could get some heat shrink on there, but I don't think it's a good way to do that. So I'm going to just rely on it. On the other two terminals being heat shrunk on there. Did I turn off my solder in there? What happened? It's turned off. Uh oh. Oh. Whoops. Wasn't plugged in all the way. Well, that's annoying. I gotta wait for that to heat up. Shit. Is there anything else I need to do on this thing? Well, I could test it. Make sure the voltmeter's working. Make sure everything's working, actually. Ta da! Cool. Voltmeter. Oh, and that's. That looks nice. I mean, I could tie in some more LEDs. At the moment, I've got one, two, three, four. Maybe I want some more. Because it'd be cool if all of these bits were glowing. I would at least want an LED all the way down here, which is going to be kind of a pain. Okay, I acquired more LEDs. But where would I want to put them? And is it going to be even worth the trouble? Because I could easily put one under the, the uh, magazine release, and another one under this, and another one here, and another one there. But then, do I have enough in the front? another question. I mean I kind of have to do it now that I'm now that I'm thinking about it but it's just gonna be extra work. Okay let's do it. Every project takes longer than you expect it to especially when you feature creep yourself like this. It's not really a reason for me to have an LED in under that plate like that so I can probably just move that over. I just kind of stuck it there because it was a convenient place for one. Yeah, so you can literally just flex over to the other side, and I don't think it's going to be in the way of anything. And it'll make the trigger glow. Just need the, I just need to hot glue it in place. It's another tool is required. Glue gun. So I've got that one. I want one in there, which means I need to make myself a channel for it. There we go, that's there. Now it does not interfere at all. First LED placed. So I can just shove this one into the battery door and then add a second trigger LED, possibly. Oh yeah, I still need one back behind the trigger. Let's grab a couple more LEDs. So we want one for the trigger, one more down here, and maybe one more up here just to really make this thing glow. LEDs everywhere. All the LEDs. The easiest way would be to just tie all the LEDs into existing LEDs. LED, 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 LED. I could tie them into that, but that strikes me as stupid because that's such a weird thing to join. I've got all this wire here that's extra. Well, first I need to tie these four LEDs together so that I can then wire them all into something else. And then these two I need to tie into one over here. Those wires are so tiny that my that my usual wire strip was one at work, so I got my other set. Alright, one weird thing about these LEDs is that the color of the wires is backwards. Because typically black is your negative, right? But on all these LEDs, black is the positive. And the colored wire, which indicates the color of the LED, is your negative, which completely messes with my head, and I have to remember it. It's one thing I hate about these LEDs, aside from the backwards coloring, is that your wires are so tiny and terrible. It makes it kind of hard to splice them together. And I should be able to literally just splice all of these LEDs together at the lengths that I've cut them at. I need to strip them with the smallest setting. First I just tie these all together so that they are functionally one LED in the circuit. And then I can worry about where I'm tying in the whole bundle. It makes it a little easier. Especially when you're working with something you've already previously wired up and 
kind of adding to it. So I need all the blues. It's four blue wires. And because of the way I'm doing this, I am actually going to be able to heat shrink that up. I do have blue heat shrink, but that's kind of overkill in terms of attention to detail for something that somebody's never going to see. So what's the smallest size? Actually, is this small enough? Well, it just so happens that the blue that I have is nice and small. <laughs> so, never mind what I said earlier. I'm going to be using blue. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this video in terms of editing. I don't want to just have this long, boring thing, because I'm not... I'm not, like, discussing any topics or anything. I can't, like, treat it like a podcast. So I need to at least do some editing, but that's future David's problem. People always tell you not to touch the solder with the um, soldering iron directly. I'm not sure why. Probably just decreases the life of the tip of your soldering iron, but it makes it so much easier to solder certain things that I just don't care. Especially small stuff like this. Okay. Heat. Go. That looks nice. Okay. Now let's make sure these all go where I thought they were going to go. Which they should. We got the one all the way down there. Right. I don't even remember which one the main one is. It's probably the shortest one. Got one out here. And then one up there. Yeah, cool. Look at that. Of course it all needs to be glued and set into place properly so that it doesn't interfere with the trigger. But now I can run all these wires up and I need to make another channel for myself right here. So that I can run them up here to this, up to the switch and to this extra wiring that is just sitting here and ready to be spliced into. Now this won't be heat shrinkable, but electric tape works just fine. Now do I want to add two more to the front? Yes, I do. How easy is that going to be? No idea. I want the rail to glue. So I could just drill into the rail slightly. Yeah, let's get the, um, the 3 16th drill bit which is the size the size of the front of the LED casing but not the um, the very edge of it so that I can just sink an LED into this rail just a little bit there we go I should be able to, to force an LED into that hole Uh, that'll glue. That'll look pretty cool. God, I wonder just how much of this video is going to be cut out by the time I'm done. And I don't think the camera is very well centered, unfortunately. But so I've almost tripled the number of LEDs in this blaster. And now the delicate process of splicing into tiny wires. Got to feed this into here and around so that I can then do a little snip and snip and then repeat for the black wire snip snip yeah, this is kind of brittle like um, PVC insulation and not the nice silicone stuff that you see with our the wiring that we typically use so it can be picked apart just with your fingernails sometimes, which is nice because it makes it a little easier. Let's do that. And I've been doing this crap the LiPo attached. <laughs> well, the switch is off, so I'm not too worried about it, but do as I say, not as I do. It's going to be the theme of my mod videos. I was working on the TV the other day trying to see if I can figure out why it broke. It's my only television and it just suddenly decided to crap out on me right after I attached four different game consoles to it. Which is annoying. It's a TV I've had for about a decade. 
and it's time to replace it obviously but I wanted to see if I could find anything obvious wrong with it and um, I had it plugged in and open I take the back I've taken the back off of it and then I plugged it in to see if see anything reacting to the power button and then like an idiot I grabbed one of the big capacitors on the TV and got a quite a shock more stupidity that I wouldn't recommend duplicating. The only reason I'm not bothering to unplug the LiPo right now is that I know that these LEDs are tied into a switch which is currently off and the power can't get to them. If you're not confident in your circuit like I am, you're much better off just never working on something when the battery is plugged into it. Oh, that's off. <laughs> It's like napalm and just kind of got stuck to my finger and burned me. It's almost like it's liquid metal. I'm not going to be doing everything perfectly and I hope that my channel can serve as a good example in two different directions. What to do and what not to do. Especially when you're starting out it's important to not compare your work to everybody else's online for the simple reason that they're not going to show you all the mistakes. You're comparing yourself to somebody else's highlight reel, and that is never a good way to increase your self-esteem. Now if I can do this without burning myself on hot glue, that'd be great. Alright, and there's those LEDs. Now I should be able to turn them all on. Woo! It's all glowy. Cool. Yep, nothing's in the way of the wheels. Oh, I spoke too soon. That's in the way of the wheels. Okay, all right, all right. That hole needs to be slightly deeper. I should have moved this farther forward because it's right where the wheel engages there and that is not a good thing. I knew I was gonna do that. Oh well. That's fine. I got a hole in there. The LED can go in as deep as it needs to now. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna just super glue that up. LED. I think I've super glued my super glue. Oh come on. So that is not going anywhere. See how annoying this is? I wish I had a, I need to get a smaller stripper for it. It's more like, it's more like these. So that I can more easily do these smaller wires. So what happens when you fill a blaster with 10 LEDs, you get crappy tiny little wires everywhere that you have to make sure aren't interfering with the main mechanics of the blaster. And considering this blaster is where I learned to wire up LEDs in the first place, it is not the cleanest. And tiny work like this, with hands my size, has always been a little fiddly, but I'm used to it. Ha <laughs> It's a lot more lights. Cool. Now, we've got to get all of this put together. Oh, yes. Oh, I for oh, damn it. I forgot to screw in the flywheel cage. Which is not something you can do with that. Actually, screw in the flywheel cage this time because it's kind of important. It's so pretty. I think that's it. And this is smoothly cycling. Nothing's in the way of it. Good. It's nice. Okay, what about my thumb screw? Does this work? It does not. Oh, that's annoying. He included some screws, but I like thumb screws. So now I gotta ask myself whether I want to just trim that down so that this will fit. Which I think I will. I think I got to. There we go. 
use the right kind of bit, you can clean it up without making it look like you drummed the hell out of it. Now that looks just fine. Cool. This is definitely some dusty stuff. I'm not sure what it's made out of. Reminds me of um, polycarb, actually, but probably not that strong. I need to trim it a little bit more. Okay. There, that should do it. Bah. Dust everywhere. It seems like I need to drill that out just a bit, just for convenience sake. That. The only reason I have to modify any of this is that I'm using hardware that that Biggs was not expecting. Because he provided some really nice regular screws to go with it. You can see he's got a silver, a black, and an actual clear one that he must have cast, which is kind of crazy, which is really cool. But I like thumb screws too much, so I'm going through the trouble to make my thumb screw work. And I think that will do it. Just barely not enough, huh? Nope, 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 nope. Hey! It works! Now that is awesome. It's so pretty. It's got the one light poking out the bottom where I drilled through accidentally, but it's still fine. Cool. And it all turns off. Come on. That one LED is in the way and the rev trigger is getting stuck. So I gotta unscrew the whole thing again, figure out what's wrong, trim it down a little bit, and then it'll be good. Yeah, that's, that's how projects go. You get it all together and you think it's good and then I open it right back up because you did something stupid the kind of thing that they don't include in most videos, but it happens to everybody. Let's see if that fixes it. And then at the same time, I'm going to take the file to this edge of it just to make sure. Okay. Hopefully that, that did it. I'm going to find out very shortly. Alright, finally. Now I think I'm done. Let's screw it all together. So this thing has parts from so many different companies in it at this point. It of course has Big Zenzi's cast parts, which are beautiful and really tie this whole thing together. Open flywheel project Morpheus cage in it, which has been printed, I believe, by Out of Darts. It's got MTB Neo Rhino motors in it. Cool looking flywheels. A voltmeter that I probably procure, uh, procured from Foam Blast. LEDs off of Amazon. Voltmeter 3D printed attachment thingy from Out of Darts. So we've got pretty much everybody but the containment crew represented here. And that's only because I didn't really need an ABS cage. But if this cage melts on me, that's the first place I'm going to go. Okay. It's looking really good. So, here it is all finished up lights. So yeah, the, um, those big Zen Z resin parts are awesome. They look fantastic. So thank you to Biggs. All the way from New Zealand. <laughs> and add an NF Strike magazine to it to complete the look. And that is just fantastic. Didn't expect my my experiment loader strife to suddenly be this awesome just by swapping out some parts and adding a couple more bits in there. Well, I 
I'm certainly happy with it. Let me know what you think about the format of this video. Wander mod guide. Well, it's not really a mod guide. I'm not really doing anything special. I'm just, just kind of a mod, mod along video. You know, Mr. Nathan style stuff. Oh, I got it yet. Some of this action in there. Well, look at that. That is nice looking. I kind of wish I'd added a, um, a, an LED to the magazine well, but mostly that's not going to be glowing anyway, so it's not a big deal. That is awesome. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Arctic Strife. I will see you in the next video. Until then, this has been Carius reminding you to have fun.